Psalm 121 verses 7 and 8 say, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The life of every single one of God's people from beginning to end, in any and all circumstances, is kept by God's sovereign hand. The word keep shows up six times in Psalm 121 verses 3 through 8. Its repetition not only defines how God helps his people, the repetition also reinforces that God will help his people. But how does God keep his people if verses 7 and 8 say God keeps our lives, keeps us from all evil, keeps us from this time forth and forevermore? So how does God keep us when bad things continue to happen to us? The Bible answers that question by revealing that God is sovereign over all things, including the bad things that come to us. Lamentations is a book of the Bible lamenting the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. But chapter 3 says over and over that it was God who brought the destruction, even though it was carried out by humans. The Belgic Confession states God's sovereignty over suffering and affliction uh, in this way. Nothing can happen to us by chance, but only by the arrangement of our gracious Heavenly Father, who watches over us with fatherly care. That's his keeping. So that not one of the hairs on our heads, for they are all numbered, can fall to the ground without the will of the Father. And so the first step to seeing how God keeps his people is to acknowledge his absolute sovereignty. He is the God who made heaven and earth. And if God has the power to make all things, then he has the power to control all things. And if God has the power to control all things, then he has the power to help his people in times of need. And we can trust his promise to be our help when bad things happen when they come to us, because he is the one arranging everything that happens in all the world. So nothing happens to us by chance. But doesn't God's arranging of bad things happening to us prove then that God is in all loving? Well, Lamentations 3 helps us again here. As verse 33 says, for he, that's God, does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. Again, we see that it indeed is God, as he is in sovereign control of all things, who brings affliction. If we lose the truth of God's sovereignty, we lose any hope of being comforted in times of trouble. And not only that, if we lose God's sovereignty, we've walked away from the truth of Scripture. But the beauty of verse 33 is that we don't have to lose God's sovereignty or his fatherly love of his people as God does not afflict us from his heart. God's heart is to lovingly and mercifully work together the bad and the good things for his people's ultimate good. So that's the second step in seeing how God keeps his people. He sovereignly arranges all things, including the bad things, in love to work together for our ultimate good. The bitter providences that come into our lives, though they are painfully real and deeply afflicting at times, are meant for our good. Because of sin, our hearts are bent away from God. And though he's begun his redeeming work in us, that work is not yet complete. Now, I don't mean that every bad thing that comes into life uh, or into your life is a specific judgment for a specific sin. But rather, because sin still indwells us, we are prone to wander from the God who loved us and gave himself for us. And left to ourselves, we would walk away from God. Hosea 11 verse 7 talks about our heart in this way. It says, my people are bent on turning away from me. The bitter providences of life are meant to draw us into deeper fellowship with God as God conforms us into the image of his Son. Satan wants us to think that God has lost control or God's love for us has waned when bad things happen to us. 
But Psalm 121 verse 8 reminds us that that will never and can never be true. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So forevermore, that word there, broadens the scope of God's keeping us from what we normally think about. And it's a very important word that we must keep in mind when we go through trials or suffer. Kathy Keller uh, said it helpfully in a video this past week this way. She said, many of God's promises are met on the far side of resurrection, not on the near side. We tend to think that if it's not going to happen in the here and now, then what good is it? In other words, we're tempted to think when we suffer or go through trials in this life, that God isn't keeping us, or maybe he fell asleep, or that he can't protect us. But his goal isn't our comfort or happiness in this life, or the things of this earth, but in keeping us through this life, through the sufferings and the trials of this life included, in order to bring us to himself forevermore. God is getting us ready to live eternally with him in the new Jerusalem. He is doing everything it will take in each and every one of his people to bring us safely home. So our task then is to align our definition of true happiness with God's pursuit of our true happiness, which is not in ease or comfort or wealth in this life, but in enjoying him in enjoying God forevermore. I love how Philippians 1, 6 puts this all together for us. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. We can be sure that the God who made us and the God who began his work of redeeming us before the foundation of the world is the God who will bring to completion his salvation of his people. And so that means there is no evil that can befall you. No suffering that you can go through. No enemy that stands against you that can end God's help for you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that can thwart God completing his good work in you and for you if you're one of his people. So rather than railing against God in trouble, he gives the grace to rest in his shade as the sun beats down upon us. When our fears grow greater than our ability to handle them and we have no idea what to do, we are still safe in Jesus Christ and nothing can separate us from his love. And brothers and sisters, even the last enemy to be defeated that still lurks and comes for each and every one of us, death. Yes, even death itself no longer has any sting for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we can know, even if a trial ends with our death, it is not death to die for those who are in Jesus Christ. Death is now a doorway to life forevermore with God. And that is true happiness, deep joy and pleasure for forevermore. So let's end our time where we began and where Psalm 121 begins and where uh, Revelation 22 ends. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light 
of lamp or of sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, help begins with remembering God is completing what he began in us to bring us safely to our final destination, which is not wealth, health, fame, ease, comfort, a life filled with pleasures on earth, but life forevermore with him and with his people in the new Jerusalem. And so may we have the grace to continue to set our hope in God alone, who will bring us to himself safely forevermore.